Hi, my name is Nathan Perry. I'm a painter currently living and working in Western North Carolina. I've put together a landscape painting video for you all. To give you some technical context to this video, uh, the palette I use is a split primary palette. So I have a warm and a cool of each primary color plus white. Um, generally speaking with my painting practice, uh, I, I work from general to specific. Um, so larger shapes down to smaller shapes. Uh, this is something you'll see throughout my video, throughout my process. Uh, normally, I would say with my plein air practice, I usually do one session paintings, um, you know, much smaller to what I've done in this video. It was a mid-sized painting. Um, I, I did over the course of, um, I painted it over the course of a few sessions. Uh, approximately, uh, the cumulative amount of painting time was about four and a half hours. Um, to give you context with my smaller work, you know, usually I'll make, uh, you know, one five by five, five by seven painting uh, over the course of an hour or two. I did want to keep this introduction short. There's a lot of narration throughout the process video. Uh, and just to give you kind of a quick uh, layout, uh, essentially how I start is a very um, quick, generalized, linear drawing. From there, I work in larger patches of color and um, kind of break down uh, the composition and space from there. Uh, my primary focus in this painting was uh, first off atmosphere um, and you know how do I analyze those color relationships uh, to, to recreate that sense of atmosphere uh, and three distinct levels of space, foreground, middle ground, and background. So beyond that, I'll let the process videos do the talking. Um, so just to give you an idea of how I'm organizing this as far as, um, you know, my actual painting of this scene, um, I will be painting it over the course of a few sessions. Um, a lot of the time when I do plein air painting, uh, it's, you know, much smaller uh, canvas. I've even been working down to, you know, 5x5, five 5x7 by five, five by um, this summer. Um, so this is a 12 by 16 inch painting surface, um, which is wood, um, so birch plywood with linen mounted on top, and then I've oil primed that. So um, what I usually do, um, unless it's just a pure color study, um, is I'll always start uh, with a very kind of simplified line drawing. Uh, you know, I'm not going to go for a lot of, like, detail. Um, I'm, I'm just going for large compositional shapes. Uh, and so uh, I can, I can kind of get the overall, um, just the overall sense of space. Uh, over, um, you know, overlap of space uh, and those three distinct those three distinct levels of foreground, middle ground, and background. Um, and there are a lot of kind of layers here that I'm observing. Um, so we'll see, um, we'll see how much I can kind of delineate that, those separations. Um, and so this is something I wouldn't normally do, but I'll just do it for the sake of illustration. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm just going to make a single contour line. It's going to separate my foreground from my middle ground, and then I can pretty easily point out what my middle ground will be and what my background will be. Um, so I have some dogwoods here. And there are a few holes in here. Uh, that you can't really see yet, or that I haven't painted yet. Um, but so here, from about this now reddish-brownish line down, 
uh, that's going to be my foreground. Uh, and then this mass here, it's a tree, um, this, 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 and this, um, we could say that's, that's probably middle ground. Um, and then these, the, the ridge line up here, um, and these corresponding mountains and maybe some trees back here will be our, um, background. And so one of the most important things, um, when you're starting a painting is figuring out basically the key, uh, the uh, or rather the the hierarchy of values um, which will correspond to your colors directly uh, and so what what I often do um, when I'm looking when I'm trying to figure out you know what's okay where do I start there's a lot of colors up here uh, so where what do I do um, so as you can see you know if we look at this painting as it is we just have the white of the ground you know maybe some greens and some reds uh, and just try to uh, control those initial moments of color. Um, and so what I'm doing now is I'm mixing... the lightest color I can see, um, which is a very overcast day. So there's like kind of a thinner area in the clouds here um, that is going to act um, as kind of my, my lightest note. There's also um, our neighbor's house here up the road, which is painted white. Um, those are those are probably our two kind of lightest points uh, in the composition.
So we're on session two today. So what I'm going to be doing is, you know, I have a lot of information here, um, and that's 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 good uh, in that I can make some comparisons. So of course I'm going to compare what's already on my panel, the colors here, to what I'm seeing, um, and then comparing adjacent colors, um, both in my landscape and in my painting. Um, you know, asking, okay. And I, you know, I generally speaking, um, I'll, I don't use a lot, you know, in my head, I don't use a lot of like the warm, cool terminology. It's more of like a literal, uh, kind of prismatic path where I'm saying, okay, this is a green. Um, is that, does that green lean more towards yellow or more towards blue? Um, you know, if, if, uh, if I have a neutral, I'll name that chromatically. Um, okay, that's, you know, a very gray color, but what does that mean? Is it more purple? Um, is it more green? Um, is that purple more red? Is that purple more blue? Uh, and so I get, you know, we'll get very specific. I'm not going to verbalize, you know, every single color mixture, um, but just know that, what, that what I'm, that's what I'm doing. Um, so we know from our first session, that's how I got, you know, this passage of color versus this passage of color, you know, passing from my background to my middle ground. Um, and so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to push those a little bit. Um, and so I, um, so what I'm going to do is, uh, one of the things that's most glaring to me this morning, morning, um, and obviously a different day, different weather, uh, different light, uh, you know, still very overcast, somewhat similar, um, as similar as I could hope for. Um, but I'm looking at, you know, the color of my sky versus the color of my, my mountains. Um, and then how, how these colors change as the space kind of, um, advances towards us. So what we're going to kind of see throughout this process, um, and this will become more clear in maybe session three or four, uh, but basically what, what's going to happen is, you know, but, uh, across any form, you have, uh, generally speaking, you have your light and your shadow. Um, so like here on the tree, you know, light, you know, I'm working with a very diffused light, so it's, um, there's not a lot of contrast, but light shadow, um, even back here in these trees, um, back on the mountain in my background, um, that that is definitely I can definitely see kind of elements of light and shadow. But as things recede, the contrast between light and shadow is going to collapse. Going to uh, is going to collapse a little bit. You know, there's going to be uh, a little less contrast there. Um, and so we'll see that you know as I. Um, yeah, as I kind of work back um, into some of these areas, because essentially what I'm doing in these first stages is basically I will, um, you know, I'll generalize into like one or two colors. Um, and then from those one or two colors, we can kind of, um, we can then break those down into, you know, one or two colors each. So what's happening here is I'm working to the background. Um, I'm seeing that um, as I'm working that color in, you know, I want to keep kind of zooming out and thinking, okay, how does this, how does this color that I'm introducing into the composition uh, comparing to my overall sense of light, my overall color scheme that I'm that I'm observing? And so what I'm finding, you know, I've, I've only been working for maybe five minutes. Um, seven minutes but that's as I step back um, and you can you have the benefit of seeing me do this kind of throughout uh, because you're looking over my shoulder and you can see when I'm at the painting and when I'm not 
Um, and so what I'm constantly do is, uh, doing is I'm stepping back so I can see the whole kind of, um, the whole like totality of, of my view. And so I can see that, you know, when I step back that, you know, I don't want my colors up here, um, farthest back to be as dark as even, you know, say like this color, um, cause that's a little bit closer. Um, things are getting, you know, as they're getting closer and closer to me, uh, as the viewer, uh, things are going to get dark, darker, sharper, and clearer. So I'm actually, what I'm going to do for today, just to, mix it up. And so this is an important, important thing to point out um, when I when I bring up comparisons, um, because I think I think what's happening here this morning um, is basically I'm comparing. All I'm doing is I'm comparing the sky to the mountain, um, and we're always gonna, you know, our brain always kind of like jumps the gun a little bit um, and almost puts in more contrast than there even might be. Um, and so my comparison has to be not only between the sky and the mountain here, but also the trees here, trees here, trees here. I'm gauging that value key so it, it relates to the whole image. So, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like not, I'm not taking my own medicine this morning really uh, because I'm just kind of comparing here and here. Um, and so I think it's turning this colors uh, a little bit too dark. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to overshoot that. Uh, I'm going to, you know, look here, not just here and here, but here, 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 here. And so I'm, I'm, I'm almost like imagining that sort of like value or in this case, color scale, um, to kind of reach, reach through the whole space. So even as I'm just mixing, it's like, oh, okay, that's, you know, that's one color in the background but that color is gonna relate, need to relate to every, uh, to all the other colors uh, in my composition. And so I will, you know, this is something I'm gonna adjust later, um, but all I'm kind of, getting in right now is just these two these two colors um this this light and the shadow in the background and you'll notice as i said you know relating to what i said before you know the contrast between those two colors um is going to be very low um you know and i'm still trying to you know keep things very loose um keep things very general um, and so I'm not you know there are some very specific like shapes back here like you know I could say like you know there's like a kind of hard shape like this but since my foreground's you know still in this this sort of stage um, and I am short on time today uh, you know I am going to very generally just kind of like scrub this in um, and so this this is how this is how I'm kind of hitting um, the second stage where, you know, I'm not really, I'm not really tightening the bolts yet. Um, I'm still kind of keeping, keeping uh, some of the moments in the painting at, at arm's length. Um, and I'm just trying to, to adjust a few things. So I think what, maybe what I can get here is I have that color. Um, and then just for comparison this morning, um, I'm actually going to remix this color uh, because I've, I think there's a little more light today, a little more clarity. Um, and so I, I can get, I do want that, that note of darkness um, to help me gauge it uh, next time I work into this painting.
what I'm going to do just to kind of set myself up for next time um, is I'm trying to get, I'm, tr I'm just getting a few notes here. So I adjusted this color. Um, this contour needs to change. Um, I'll figure that out next time. I'm going to kind of work that. Actually, let me soften that a little bit. I'm going to kind of work that back and forth. Um, since my sky's dry right now, I'm just going to, I just kind of like rub that up a little just to, just to break that edge a little. Um, and then what I've, what I've kind of given myself to go off of next time, um, is I have, I threw in a few of my shadow colors, um, because I'm, you know, I, I am short on time this morning. Um, so I have, you know, my distant, which even as the light's changing, this is lightening up even more, but that's something that, you know, we're just going to see kind of the, the ebb and flow of those colors, um, as, as time passes. Um, like there's some really nice things happening right now. Um, but, but what I'm doing is I'm just trying to get this, these, uh, kind of tuning some of my major, major notes here where I have like the mountains back here in my background. Um, this where, um, this kind of shadowy shape in the trees, uh, that is, that's still, I guess, te yeah, technically background. Um, but that's, that's getting a little bit darker. Um, still not quite as dark as say like my, you know, my foreground here. Um, and so I just, before I go today, I just want to get a few of these notes going so I can see like just across, just through my space, um, you know, increasing the contrast a little bit, um, according to what I've got, what I'm seeing today. Um, and then we'll, we'll call it. So even though what I had this morning when I started, um, and you know, I've, I've only been working about 20 minutes. Um, so what I had when I started, you know, that was, that was accurate to the other morning, but I'm going to let, you know, I'm going to let this painting evolve, um, as, you know, as things change, um, since this is a multi-session painting, you know, I'm not going to like hold on to like something that, that isn't going to serve my composition well. Um, and so I, I really, my main goal today was just to work in a few notes um, and, and adjust a few things um, so I'm set up for my next session. Um, so I kind of push this, the background back a little bit. Um, and then I establish some of my shadow notes here, here, and here. And just as they, as they get closer, um, you know, this is, this is sort of a system you can use. But what I'm doing is I'm, I'm reacting to what I'm seeing um, and, I'm, and I'm making those comparisons, um, you know, to uh, adjacent colors, but also across my composition. So I'm, I've lightened this, uh, darkened this to what I had, um, and then darkened this further, and then this is one of my darkest shadows. Um, and so I'm kind of using, I'm using my shadows um, as as kind of a reference point to work the space forward. So what's happened here is today um, the lighting is much different. Um, so I'm going to be doing a lot of uh, essentially repainting today. Uh, I'm just going to kind of roll with it. Uh, I have some kind of morning mist rolling in and out, um, but I'm just going to get started. So today is much more clear. But what I'm doing now is I'm just looking, since I can still see a lot of the shapes, uh, one thing I did is I uh, added some height on this tree, uh, just because that's a little closer to where I'm observing it. Um, and now what I'm doing is I'm mixing some of these darks in my foreground, um, in these, uh, the shadow side of the dark dogwood. So that's kind of like the, one of the most, one of the closest points in the foreground. And so those shadow shapes in those trees, um, are going to be some of the darkest, darkest moments in the painting, according to the lighting situation that I'm observing.
still waiting on that mist to clear a little more. Um, and I've kind of generalized some of the colors um, that are there and darkened them. And see now, I don't know if you can tell in the video, but now the mist is clearing. Um, and so I'm actually seeing some of these colors. Um, and they're not, not great. Um, there's, you know, there's a lot more kind of green in here. Um, I generalized them into these sort of like, I've generalized them to these sort of like warm um, kind of browns. And this happens a lot, you know, when you're, when you're generalizing this or like working on what, working, you know, mixing colors on, on kind of what you know instead of what you're seeing. Um, you know, you miss a lot of like the complexity there. Um, and so that's exactly, exactly what, have hap what has happened here. Um, and so this, you know, this color is very much too like general, much too like brown. Um, but what I can do, um, you know, since it's there, I can kind of work with it. The, the, the color's vaguely in front of me, um, but I'm just gonna get more specific about some of the, um, some of the greens and some of the reds happening in there. Um, and so really what I was doing here um, is kind of what I did in the last se session, um, you know, here, here, and here, where I was kind of giving myself a little bit of like a placeholder. Um, and so what's happening now is, you know, really I am kind of getting, you know, it is a clear day, but I think with this mist, I think it is kind of softening some of the contrast. So that's going to let me, um, that's bringing a little closer kind of visually um, to what we had before in my first two sessions. So if I had to verbalize, you know, why I'm putting this color here next to this is basically, um, you know, I did kind of jump the gun a little bit um, on my last session, adding these shadow shapes in. Basically what I'm doing now is uh, build, building kind of more of a context for them. So they're not, they're not so much, you know, sitting on top. So this is, what I'm doing right now is, is something I build a lot of my painting practice off of, um, at least uh, observational work. You know, so what I'm doing here is I'm essentially comparing colors as I mix them. Um, and this, you know, this is something that, you know, all, all painters do. Uh, but I definitely like specifically main, make a point to do this as I'm painting. Um, and whenever I'm making, say, like a color study, uh, oftentimes I will, I will just do this, um, you know, just laying down, um, spots of color, uh, and comparing. Uh, and so that's what I'm doing here. Um, you know, obviously I already have kind of a context and a space that these colors will exist in. Um, but as, as I'm laying these down, I'm kind of looking for, you know, that, that atmospheric interaction of, of the colors together. And so the, the point, I guess the point I'm getting at is, um, you know, I'm not, at this point, I'm not really getting it, um, you know, trying to put in any sort of like fancy brushwork. Um, I'm just, I'm just pushing in um, these different colors um, and seeing if the way they're interacting on my painting is, you know, works, is comparable to what I'm seeing. Because essentially, at the end of the day, that's that, that's all you really have uh, in a painting is you know a bunch of a bunch of colors interacting with one another, and so that's that's all I'm worrying uh, that's all I'm concerning myself with at this point. Um, you know, I'm not 
I'm not thinking about brushwork. I'm not thinking about, um, you know, transparency of the color. Uh, I'm just lay laying down these um, opaque pieces of color and seeing seeing if they fit uh, into that this sort of um, atmospheric color space that I'm that I'm reaching for that I'm trying to recreate on my panel on my surface in my painting So what you saw me do is, um, just now, is, you know, I was holding my palette knife up here. I'm like, oh, does that look right? But, you know, that all depends on, like, how the light's hitting the, the palette knife. Um, and so you want to see how, you know, the true test of a color, and if you've mixed it right, is, you know, how it sits on the panel or painting surface. And so, you know, what you can do... Yeah, you know, maybe maybe in your later stages you go a little easier on this, you know. But what you want to do is just scrape, just scrape that, just scrape that color down. Um, that's the only way you're gonna know, um, you know, if it's sitting right. Um, if if the color's right for that, you know, for what for what you're painting it. That's the only gonna. That's the only way you're going to get the paint to, you know, truly interact, um, on the surface, um, and, you know, to test, to test, to see if it, if it is, um, you know, if your color's right. So, you know, you don't have to like, you know, cast spells with your palette knife and trying to angle it, trying to angle it right in the sun. Um, you know, just lay the color down and see if it, if it sits if it sits in space for you. is I'm seeing that, you know, not only, you know, we have, of course, how, how our colors are interacting, um, but how, you know, how different elements or how different parts of the painting really are really like connecting, like literally at the edges. Um, and so I'm seeing that I had, you know, I worked from the sky down um, in the mountains back here. Um, and then I've been kind of working in the middle ground foreground area. And so the kind of more, uh, the closer parts uh, of my background um, weren't getting really enough attention. And so the how, how they're kind of connecting, how I'm connecting my background to my middle ground um, doesn't really, isn't really working. And so that's, that's why I've, I've shifted from looking um, 
at the middle ground um, and some of these kind of shadow shapes in the trees into the um, back into the background because it's about it's about that that connection. So really, you know, we're kind of back to back to the light um, situation in those first two sessions. Um, but since I'm in, you know, such a late stage in this painting, uh, you know, what, what I'm going to do is basically find find any moments in the painting that I have any issues with, um, you know, compositionally, uh, and you know, I'm, I'm just kind of kind of work with what I've got on in in the painting um, and also what I'm seeing uh, just to kind of like hit it in the middle uh, and really you know anytime anytime you have like a multi-session painting uh, that's that's always going to be you know in a sense very much like a collage and I do that I do mean that in like a literal way because essentially you know you're not actually okay maybe not literal you know you're not actually like cutting things out but really you know you'll lay things down in sections uh and so you know there are there are a couple things that one th one main thing i'm looking for um here is like how things connect that's one thing i've mentioned previously in the painting process uh you know even though my light's a little bit different today i can still look at things kind of linearly 
um, and say, okay, does, you know, are there any, like, weird tangents? Um, and this, you know, I'm, I'm kind of splitting hairs here a little bit. Um, but, you know, something like here, you know, where I have, like, foreground, middle ground, but linearly, I have this weird kind of, like, swoop through here um, that, that really kind of, like, you know, holds that, holds that together. And, you know, in some instances, maybe that would be a good thing. Maybe I could leave that. But that's something that's really been kind of eating at me for the last couple of weeks as I look at this painting. Um, so that's one thing I'm going to address. Um, so just smaller kind of connections is, uh, are, is what I'm looking at uh, today. You know, in the, in the previous lighting situation, there was even more contrast than what I'm seeing today. And so there are a few moments, um, a few bits of information and darks that are, that are still present in this overcast state that I could kind of like pop in. I'm going to look at, you know, the information here. I think you can see, I have the camera lined up pretty well that you can see this kind of triangle of gray. Um, and that corresponds to the, my neighbor's house. Um, hopefully I don't make any grave mistakes uh, and I can I can call this painting done at the end of this session um, yeah
And so if I, you know, if I leave you with nothing else in this demo, um, I just want to say, you know, be specific. You know that that may seem kind of uh, counterintuitive to the way to the way I paint. You know, if you're looking at this painting, you know I do I do have a much more kind of like rough, um, I guess like abstract, you know, way of painting. You know, I I I am satisfied with um, with that kind of like state of the painting, uh, as you know, as long as I get that sense of light. Um, and so that being said, you know, some of, some of my kind of treatment of the material, um, some of my passages are left a little more, you know, what, what you could call like open, um, and rough and like painterly, but you know, what I'm, what I'm pushing to do, uh, in the painting is to be more specific about that color. And so, you know, just, just be specific in some capacity. Again, I mentioned this earlier, but whenever you see me go off screen, I'm usually backing up a few feet away from the, my painting. Um, that's that's yeah, that's a very important um, kind of practice, uh, you know, across across observational painting genres. Um, you know, even even into like abstraction, um, pure abstraction. You know, you can. That'll, you know, that'll help you see a lot of issues in a painting when you when you step back from it.
Always, always, always.
you know, something as small as like this contour being like a single angle, that's actually what I'm seeing is more of like a Two lines come in there like that. Uh, more of a compound angle than a single angle. And again, since I'm working more wet into wet here, um, that, that kind of prevents me from having to, you know, as I'm kind of pushing those shapes in, you know, before when I was working like here, that was wet over dry. 